In this video, we'll discuss how to dimension an architectural drawing. Architectural drawings are dimensioned differently depending on if they're made with wood or masonry. This is a wood frame building. These are studs. This is an exterior wall. This is an interior wall. If we were dimensioning this wall this way, this would be the exterior face of the stud. If we were dimensioning this way, this would be the exterior face of the stud. Now, looking at a floor plan, you dimension exterior walls to the exterior face of the stud. You ignore the thickness of the finished material. So this dimension note, 17 foot 9 inches, is the distance from the exterior face of this stud to the exterior face of the stud on the other side. Interior walls are dimensioned to their centers and windows and doors are dimensioned to their centers. These are extension lines. These are dimension lines, also called stringers. These are dimension notes and these are tick marks. This dimension note is the distance between the tick marks. Notice how it's done. It is lettered in guidelines and it floats about an eighth of an inch above the dimension line. It does not rest on it. Now an alternative way of drafting these extension lines is to draw them right to the corners and leave a little gap. When you're interpreting this, however, you are supposed to interpret this exactly the same as this, meaning that you interpret this distance, 17 foot 9 inches, to be the distance from the exterior face of stud to the exterior face of stud, even though they're drawn to the corners. Some drafters draw them to the corners simply for convenience. Note that there's a small gap there, whereas all the other extension lines do extend into the plan a bit. You want to put as many dimensions off the plan as you can, but at the same time, you don't want to have the dimensions too far from the features they're describing. So that's why you'll see dimensions inside the plan too, because taking them out would put them too far from what they're describing. Now here are some other dimensioning standards. All your dimension notes should be the same size as any other lettering, typically an eighth of an inch. You don't want to crunch them smaller when you don't have room to put them in an area. So when you don't have room, it's acceptable to take them off the drawing and have a leader line point to that area. Fractions should be, demand, should be drafted so that the numerator and denominator are both the full height of a guideline. You want to avoid crossing over extension lines, but when it's unavoidable, put a little loop in one of them. Columns are dimensioned to their centers, and arrowheads are an alternative to tick marks, but they're kind of old school. When you write your dimensions, you should write them in proper architectural format. However, if you're crunched for space, along with this being an alternative, this is an alternative. This means 3 foot 0 inches. If there was a number there, like 6, it would mean 3 foot 6 inches. When you're dimensioning circles and arcs, you write D 
or a theta symbol and that means diameter. So this means that this circle has a diameter of 14 inches, diameter being the distance from here to here and going through the center. R means radius, which is the distance from the center to the circumference, and the radius should be at the end of the arrow. So this means that this arc has a radius of 7 inches. Here is an example of a wood frame floor plan. Let's take a look at it. All the dimension notes are above the dimension lines and on the vertical stringers, they're to the left. So on all the stringers, the numbers are either above or to the left. Above, to the left. When you're dimensioning, you're dimensioning for two things, size and location. You want to tell the reader how big everything is and where it's located relative to other things. So, just about everything needs to be dimensioned. Fixtures are dimensioned to their centers, openings to their centers, columns to their centers, windows to the centers, and then you want an overall dimension. You want one horizontally, and you want one vertically. You don't need to put the overall on all four sides. Just one overall here and here is enough. Now let's look at masonry. Masonry is units of concrete block or brick or stone or glass block. For dimensioning purposes, poured concrete also counts as masonry. Poured concrete obviously isn't masonry, but it's dimensioned the same way. It's much simpler than wood frame dimensioning. You dimension masonry to the edges. The edge of the wall, edge of the window, other edge of the window, edge of the door, and notice that's going to the edge of the jam, not to the sill, other edge of the jam, and then to the corner of the wall. Notice there is a gap between each dimension line and the wall. And this is the poche, by the way, for concrete block. Other than that, it's very similar to wood dimensioning. Now what happens when you have a building that is a masonry veneer on a wood frame? Well, you handle that the same way as you would wood frame. Here is the wood frame, and notice the poche for that is no poche, it's left open. You're dimensioning to the exterior face of stud, to exterior face of stud, and this is the stone veneer on it, which I've given a dimension here of six inches, but you could leave that off if you wanted. Here is an example of a masonry dimensioned plan, edge to edge to edge to edge. Dimension notes go above and to the left of the stringers. And that is an overall of architectural dimensioning.